this fabulous event. It makes me very happy and also a little bit sad to be here this morning. As we mentioned on a few occasions, I joined along with all of you, and now you're done. And, uh, and, <laughs> and, and we're going to be sad to see you go. Um, and this is a time for us to formally mark this occasion, to think about where you've come from, where you are, where you're going to, um, and to wish you well as you leave Oxford. This event is about you, the ones who are dressed in the funny black robes. Uh, but we all know that the real heroes in today's story are the people, I think in the wings, um, who are the people who've supported you over not just the last year, but over the last 26, 27, 28, 29, whatever it is, years of your life. Um, they're the ones who helped you grow up. They're the ones who supported you when you were kids in school. They were the ones who you know, took care of you when um, when life was tough, they're your partners, the ones who came here um, and uprooted their lives in order to be with you, they're the ones that found jobs in the UK when it was hard to do so, they're the ones that took care of your families, they're the ones that took care of scrapes and bruises on your kids, and they're the ones that sat alone when you were busy at night. So I think this is a great time, before we do anything else, for you all to turn around and to thank the people around you. When I'd go off to school, she'd say, you know, you work, I pray. They did a lot more than pray. <laughs> Our thanks also go to some other folks who did more than pray that you had a good experience, but did a lot of hard work to make sure that it took place. And that is the faculty and the staff. So we're represented here by your fabulous course director, Stefan Chambers. scenes, they made sure that it was all that you hoped it would be, and hopefully in front of the scenes, the faculty pushed you, goaded you, urged you on. But today's really all about you. You're a remarkable group of people. You come from 20, excuse me, 51 different countries. If we were to slice the globe into three big slices, one going north to south, so one's the Americas, one's Europe and Africa, one's Asia and, and Australia, we'd be in three roughly equal segments. You are an incredibly global class. Uh, you're also a very accomplished class, and as I know, because I called some of you to try to convince you to come, um, you had a lot of other choices, and you chose to come with us. You chose to join this community, and we will be forever proud that you've done that, and hopefully you will be forever proud that you've done that as well. Um, so this is a good time, since you've made that choice at this juncture, to ask, well, what does Saeed mean to you? What does this year mean to you? Uh, there's tangible parts of this memory that I think will last for a long, long time. There are photographs from a picture book of Oxford, and there are many of those picture books from Oxford. It's dressing up in subfusk like this. It's dressing up in your formal wear. I suspect that you've worn tuxedos and long gowns more in the last year than perhaps in any other year before that. Um, it's sitting in historic Oxford locations, whether it's Oxford buildings or pubs or wherever. Maybe it's standing on the banks of the Thames watching your colleagues rowing in the race the big uh, the boat race. Maybe it was on the crowd on a very rainy May day morning. I don't think you were up that early, listening to the Maudlin Choir Welcome to Spring. Well, maybe it was a lively Oxford Union debate when you weren't, you were so impressed that people could take such articulate points of view and at the same time be funny. Maybe it was wandering around this extraordinary city and realizing that you were following the footsteps of a huge part of Western history. Uh, so, the pictures and photographs and memories hopefully will stay with you for quite a while. The second thing we hope you come away from is, can be represented by a mental map. So if you think about what maps look like today and what they used to look like a few hundred years ago, a few hundred years ago you'd find these very lovingly drawn maps with large parts of that map that simply said terra incognito. They didn't know what was there, it was, it was, it was unknown. And when you came to Oxford there was probably a mental map in your mind and hopefully parts of that mental map are filled out. I'm not sure which parts were filled out for each one of you. Uh, I did miss the wonderful session you had earlier this week where you reflected on the things that you learned 
over the course of the last year. But I do have spies everywhere, so I've heard about that. Um, and from what I understand, different ones of you learn different things. You filled out that mental map in different ways. Um, for some of you, maybe it's quantitative skills that you picked up. For others, design thinking. For others, uh, perspective on the world. Um, whatever your mental maps were coming in, I hope that leaving, you're much more complete. Um, and so the second thing, in addition to images and photographs, are those mental maps. But hopefully this experience didn't just change how you think or, or what you know, and didn't just give you a set of stories that you'll be able to tell for the rest of your life, but it changed in a little, little bit who you are. No, a lot, because you were fine people when you came, so we weren't trying to change you into something else. But to a small degree, we hope that we changed a little bit of who you are. First, we hope that you've become better learners and thinkers. This is the year of the Olympics, uh, and as, all we, as we all know, there were many, many stories about how world-class Olympians spend tens of thousands of hours practicing their craft, whether it's how to turn their wrist to get a good spin on the ball in tennis, or, or how to make sure that as they're rowing in crew, they're exactly and precisely um, aligned with one another, or whatever the task might be. I always marvel at how the Olympians do what they do, and how you know, the Paralympics that we've just seen, how those people do what they've done, which is even tougher. In any event, it takes tens of thousands of hours to get a professional athlete up into shape. And our athletics, as it were, is thinking. And so you took some time out from the six or seven years that you had before coming back to the school to spend a year thinking. Um, and hopefully, as you've exercised your mind, you feel slightly better prepared to be a critical thinker, to not take things for granted, to ask hard questions, to listen carefully to the other side, to try to draw inferences on your own, um, and to try to weigh arguments in a, in a much uh, more careful way. So hopefully that is something else that you've come away with, so better thinkers. Second, we hope that you're better decision makers and, and business executives. This is not a PhD program, this is an MBA program. You will go off and you will run important organizations, important in all different ways. And in, making, in running those organizations, you're going to have to listen to the people around you, make decisions with incomplete information, uh, make hard decisions when sometimes there's no good decision. Um, and hopefully this program and this year has helped you in that way. In part, maybe by what happens in the classroom, in part by some of the things that you've pulled together, like pulling together Capstone, uh, which some of you did, led by Till. Uh, that took a lot of work to do that. You had to make decisions, and it wasn't so clear that it was going to turn out. But those working together to make those things happen uh, are really important. I had a lovely conversation last night at the barbecue with one of your classmates who told me that, that she went on to, do on to do something that she couldn't even imagine that she would have done before she came. And she didn't have the self-confidence to do this particular thing um, when she came. But leaving, she felt that she not only had the skills, but there was something about the experience that she had that enabled her to make that leap, to have more confidence in herself. Mm -hmm. And I hope that that's the second thing that you come away with. Not only an ability to think, but an ability to make decisions. And third, and perhaps most importantly, I hope that this experience has created bonds that will last for years. A little more than a century ago, Ian Forster, the British novelist, wrote, actually it's one of my favorite novels called Howard's End, mm -hmm. a novel about England at the beginning of the 20th century. Its epigraph is Only Connect, and what it's all about, if you haven't read it, it's about how relationships between different people, very different people, um, evolve, and how there are tremendous benefits of connecting with one another including people who are very different. So at the simplest level, the connections that you've made hopefully are very clear. You came as 248 individuals, and you leave as a class. With the connections that I hope will last for your entire life. And I've said this before, I don't have many speeches, so I keep recycling the same ones. Um, <laughs> that I graduated with an MBA 28 years ago. And, and my closest friends in the world are my MBA classmates. And there are three of us who have gotten together every month in 28 years, interrupted only by my move to the UK, although that's been solved by Skype. Uh, <coughs> these bonds are the strongest in my life, other than my family. And they've carried us through ups and downs, and I hope for you it's the same. A, f a very comforting but frightening thought, and your parents around might be able to comment on this, is that the strongest bonds you make as adults could be the ones that you forge them as you. You might want to think about that. This is a special year. You haven't been competing with one another in the workplace. You're 
Uh, somehow something <coughs> might have happened this year and the people around you could be the people that are with you when you have kids and the people that, when you have grandkids. Um, and I hope that I pray that that's in fact true, that you've made some bonds that will last for the rest of your life. The second connections are not between you, but with all of you and us. Um, you've joined a community, um, and hopefully you're going to stay engaged with this community for the rest of your lives. As an alumnus or an alumni, you're very much part of this community of students, and, uh, as much as, uh, as you would be as students. And one of our top priorities is to create a community such that you're engaged for a long, long time. Um, and that comes from creating a network so that you can reach out to one another, a physical network of alumni associations and organizations. Um, the program that we talked about earlier this week about trying to connect you all one another with a, a big and interesting set of questions. And it's our responsibility to try to keep that network as, as close and as tight as we possibly can. And the final connection that I hope that was made a little bit more clear over the course of the last year is the connection between all of us and the broader world. Regardless of where we've come from, we've all had the privilege of joining a, a really special organization, which is Oxford, a lead organization that has existed for over eight centuries. Um, the problem with Oxford, um, with dropping the O-bomb when you meet people um, and telling them, oh yes, I went to Oxford, um, or hanging that diploma on your wall, is that people will come to expect things of you, and they should expect things of you. Um, and with status come certain benefits, and with those benefits come real responsibilities. Um, to everyone to whom much is given, much is expected. Um, a quote that I've used before, uh, use it again because I think it's absolutely true. What are the responsibilities placed upon us? Surely proper behavior. Uh, I'm a finance professional. I've studied finance and researched it and, and consulted in this field. And I'm deeply saddened by the allegations of the LIBOR scandal, of charges that firms skirted the law in order to make some money, of outright lying by businesses. These make me sad and angry. And how can people to whom so much has been given and who expect others to do so well do so poorly. <coughs> you know, I think our responsibilities are far more than just avoiding bad behavior. We actually have positive responsibilities in order to try to make the world a bigger place. So let's get this in perspective. Job one, take care of yourselves and your families. Job two, make sure that you create, employee, create organizations that are effective and treat your employees well and create your customers well. But I suspect that you all do that relatively in quick order. And so what's job three? Uh, Job three, I think, is working together. Um, so what individually we can't do, collectively we can. Which is to say, as Oxonians, as a community, we have to do a little bit more. We have to take on some really big problems and think about them. Um, and that's the direction that, as we talked about earlier this week, I hope that we can take our school towards. Um, working individually, there's no way that we can address issues like how we deal with the fact that you know, by the time that your kids are in their subfusk, the world be largely composed of much many, uh, a larger fraction of elderly people. Or the fact that we're using groundwater at a rate that exceeds the, level, at the rate at which it's being produced by the earth or, or any of the other big issues facing us. <coughs> Individually, we're powerless to deal with them. Collectively, however, I think we can and should deal with them. And as we've talked about again earlier this week, as a community, I am committed to make sure that we take on some of those things. It's not just the UN and the Millennium Development Challenges or the Millennium Development Goals that set the bar, we also have to set our own bar. So at this point, I'm supposed to find a killer quote to end my speech. Um, so I just came back from the US where I watched a lot of the political conventions. And if this was a political convention, I would stay up with it. And I'd say, uh, we built that. <laughs> or forward, or four more years, or something like that. But it's not a political convention. Um, if this, if I was a real Oxford intellectual, at this point I would come up with a, uh, you know, a pithy quote, typically or hopefully with a little bit of a foreign expression in it. <laughs> um, you know, something just, just ar arcane enough so you haven't heard it, but also confusing enough that you have no idea what I said. <laughs> but I'm not really an Oxford intellectual. And if this was church, we would bow our heads and we'd pray. And so I'm not going to do any of those things. What I am going to end with is some hopes. I hope you leave as better people than when you came. I hope that you achieve as much as, as you hope to. 
I hope you take care of your families and the world, and I hope that we stay connected for the decades to come. Congratulations.